Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Rhino display properties in order to um, show shadows in rendered view. So you can quickly do screenshots and, um, and study uh, where the shadows are going to go. Um, and I'm also going to show you how to um, <clears throat> set up the, the lighting um, to um, um, in order to do that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do with my model here, uh, you may want to watch the video and set up a couple of views uh, first. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and set my uh, display view into rendered mode. So up in the top left of my view portal, click that drag, drop down. And this should be something like, I should, that should be something like what you see if you have the kind of display, uh, the default display mode, uh, display settings for rendered set up. Um, and if I, um, uh, if I want to change some of the kind of generic settings of, uh, of my rendered view, uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll type in display properties in the command line. And that'll bring up my, um, uh, my display properties menu over here. And you can see that that gives me a couple of quick options. Uh, for example, you see these colored lines. Those are like some curves that I have in my, in my file here. So I can just toggle curves off so that'll get rid of those. Um, and so this should be more or less what you see, just kind of soft, uh, kind of gray. Uh, lighting, kind of fuse lighting. Um, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is actually set up our sun so that we're simulating a real time of day and, and a real sun angle. In order to um, to turn the sun on, I'm just going to go over to my sun tab. If you don't have that open, you just type sun in the command. And it'll open up this menu. So first of all, I'll, I'll check the on button. Um, and you should get something like that. So you'll get kind of like these soft kind of glowy shadows. Um, I'm going to keep manual control unchecked. And then as I scroll all the way down here, um, I want to set my location to wherever my, um, you know, wherever my project should be. So I can just click here. I can also search, you know, Tucson, Arizona, and double click to make sure that's my location. OK, and then if I scroll back up, date and time. So we want to set ourselves up. Let's just say we're setting ourselves up to the equinox. So we're going to do September 1st. You can also pick nicely. OK, and then we can choose three times. So I can either uh, use the time slider over here, morning, afternoon, and evening. Or I can just type uh, specific numbers I want in the, in the time dialog there. OK. So that's with our sun set up. Um, and uh, so what you'll notice is uh, we're getting some shadows, but they're kind of soft and glowy. So we want to kind of mess with our display settings so we can get them to look a little bit cleaner. Um, you'll also notice like things like that are happening. It looks like certain objects are floating. Um, so if I go back to my display properties here um, and I drag uh, scroll all the way down to the bottom of that menu, I can click on Edit uh, Rendered Settings. And that should take me to my Rhino options. It should take me to Rendered Mode. One thing to just uh, note, um, if you're not getting the shadows to appear, first of all, uh, you want to make sure you have the shadows toggled on in my display, uh, not just the shading. Um, so make sure your shadows are toggled on. If you're still not getting the kind of sun shadows to work, uh, one thing you may want to check is that the, if you scroll down in here where it says lighting scheme, under lighting method, we want to make sure we're not on default lighting. But default lighting will kind of move our shadows relative to our view of the model. We don't want to do that, right? We want to use a specific um, sun angle. And so just make sure you're on scene lighting and that your sun is turned on. And that should pretty much give us our shadows we want like that. Um, and so I'm going to go uh, in there one more time. And this time, I'll go down to where it says shadows. This is a separate menu now. OK, and so basically what you want to do is drag video memory usage all the way to the right and everything else all the way to the left, except for uh, self-shadowing artifacts. If I close out, you'll see we get these kind of weird lines that kind of cover everything. Um, and that is a result of the, um, let me open it up one more time, go to shadows. That's a result of self-shadowing artifacts being turned all the way down. So if we drag that up one, up one tick, you'll see that'll go away. 
now we're getting really pretty sharp shadows. We see even like smaller objects are casting quite sharp shadows. Um, just to kind of briefly talk about what each of these does, obviously this affects how much of your computer's um, power that your um, scene is using or that Rhino is using. Uh, this one affects kind of the, the sharpness, obviously, of the shadows. This one affects if we want a kind of blurred effect um, or a smudgy effect to our shadows. Uh, this one we already talked about. And then transparent objects is one you may find useful. That's for like glass, like any object or any material that has a transparency property set to it. This, this slider will kind of affect uh, whether it casts a shadow or not. And then this one, that's just kind of based on whether you want shadows uh, close to your camera or not. So we'll drag all those down to the left, except for video memory usage all the way to the right, self-shadowing just one tick up from the left. So those are our, um, our um, shadow settings. So we should get a view, a model that looks kind of something like this. Um, one of the other things that I want to mention, I mean, uh, you can always toggle your surface edges on. Um, that'll allow you to kind of see shapes and outlines a little bit more clearly. Um, uh, I don't really recommend doing that, but you can do it just if you want to be able to see better. But one of the things you'll notice is, um, you know, sometimes this view will start to look a little blown out, and it really depends also on like what, you know, for example, if I go to one of my saved views, uh, it's really kind of hard to see where some of the shadows are in the view. Um, and so in order to adjust that, there's also... There's also a menu if we go to, um, if we just type lights into the command line. There's a menu here that has a couple of lights here, so we want to make sure we're only, we only have our sunlight on. Now, if we turn our skylight off, you'll see that, obviously, we can see our shadows a lot better, but we can't see anything that's, like, cast in the shadow. Um, so we don't want to necessarily turn the skylight off, but we do want to kind of turn it down. And so also in this menu, we'll find uh, something called environments. If you don't see it there, if you just got the lights tab, you can just go ahead and type environments into the command line. It should open up that menu. And so this kind of, uh, the skylight is kind of based on the settings that are, that exist in here. And we don't really need to mess with it because it's actually based on our sun. But what we do want to do is go down here to where it says intensity and just turn it down a little bit there. And that way we get a better balance so we can see clear, um, clearly outlined shadows, um, and we can still see what's, you know, we can still see what's going on uh, in areas cast in shadow, um, but we also, you know, don't not have shadows. Um, so um, that should pretty much conclude this video. That's how you set up your, um, your kind of display mode. Um, and if you have only one Rhino window open and you save this and close it, um, it should kind of save that, um, this display mode uh, for any Rhino that you open um, when you toggle it into um, to render display. Um, so um, uh, in the next video, we'll show you how to ex actually export those, um, uh, those views. Um,